Hey folks, Brendan here from Blue Light and welcome back to another podcast stroke video to help support you on your journey to become a police officer. So in today's video stroke podcast, yes, I'm doing them both at the same time. I'm going to take a look at the brand new College of Policing National SIFT. So for those of you who are familiar with the police recruitment process over the past couple of years because of COVID, the online assessment centre has replaced the face-to-face -face assessment centres. Uh, this is where you have to undergo a situational judgment test, a interview that's not really an interview because there's no one at the other end, and then two exercises where you're pre presented with a community policing type conundrum. One of them is a written exercise and one of them is a briefing where you have to talk for a total of 36 minutes. So that's the online assessment centre and that's been chugging away quite nicely for the past couple of years. But the College of Policing have now introduced another layer of assessment that comes before that, and it's called the National SIFT. Now, I believe that's intended to do exactly what's on the side of the tin. It's intended to sift out individuals so that not so many people do the online assessment centre, because it must be crippling the College of Policing and forces in terms of the sheer numbers of people who are applying to, do, to join the police. Now, a lot of people aren't sifted out via application form anymore, what used to happen is you'd have to submit quite a rigorous application form answering some really tough questions and it would sift out a lot of officers, uh, potential candidates that way. Forces don't have those complex application forms anymore. You can join, you can start the application process with some forces with just your basic details. And then of course you'd do the online assessment centre. So they've had to put something else in between to sift the numbers down and that's why it's called the national sift. Now what's it made up of? It's made up of a behavioural styles questionnaire. Now I've already covered that in another YouTube video. I don't know if I did a podcast on it but there's certainly a lot of information about that in my online course and if you want to check out the online course for the online assessment centre then it's in the link below and actually at this moment in time I'm hosting a bit of a summer sale there's almost 50% off my signature courses. So if you want to grab yourself a deal, grab yourself a bargain, the link's below, uh, check them out. And I'm also going to be adding um, some more videos around situational judgment tests because that's what you've also got to do as part of the National SIFT. Yeah, I know it's confusing. I've got situational judgment tests as part of the online assessment centre. Yes, you have. That's the one where they're going to present you with commu uh, community policing and policing type uh, scenarios and you've got to select out of four potential solutions which one is the best. Now this situational judgment test is similar in that it's going to give you community policing and policing type scenarios but then it's going to ask you to actually rate four of the potential solutions that they suggest as either counterproductive, ineffective, slightly effective, effective or very effective. And I've also seen some guidance knocking around that uses the word efficient. Don't confuse efficiency with effectiveness. You can do a very ineffective thing very efficiently. Yes, I know, it takes a bit of thinking about. You can do a very ineffective thing very efficiently. So think about it. They're two completely different things. So don't get confused by any advice or guidance out there that talks to you about um, rating it as um, efficient, slightly efficient, eff uh, or very efficient. It's That's not what it's about. This is about effectiveness. Is what they're proposing going to work? Is it going to actually achieve your aims? So the College of Policing have been very good. They've actually provided some scenarios. I wish I could work out how to print that off on a full piece of A4. Um, and actually, with one of my clients, I uh, sent them a bit of an exercise because they said, well, can you give me some advice about this? Now, the advice I give all of my clients in the guidance I provide for situational judgment tests is uh, there's three bits of guidance, three key pieces of guidance. I'll cover, first of all, what the guidance from the College of Policing says um, and forces say. They're going to tell you to act naturally in your answers, just be yourself and answer the questions honestly. That's the worst thing you can do. <laughs> the three bits of guidance I give you, actually it's, it's wrapped up in one big piece of guidance that I'll come to in a moment, is do not answer the questions honestly, do not be yourself, and I'm not gonna say don't be honest, what I'm gonna say is 
there's a degree of honesty involved here because you're going to be answering the questions not as you are today, not honestly as you would today as the person you, you are. I want you to answer the questions as the best version of your future constable self. So you're going to answer the question honestly, but as the best version of your future constable self. Because they're assessing you, they are assessing you against the behaviours from the uh, competency and values framework. And the competency and values framework describes the perfect police officer, I suppose, if you can work out all the HR gobbledygook speak. Um, they're describing the perfect police officer. So that's what you're going to be. That's what you're striving to be, the best version of your future constable self. So I want you to answer the questions as the best version of your future constable self. And I'll give you an example from the College of Policing and from my clients. Let me just get my bits of paper lined up in the right way. So um, they provided a example scenarios. I'll read the example scenario out to you first. And if I can read this small writing and the potential answers. And then what I ask my client to do is to answer the question honestly, as you are today, acting naturally, just being yourself. And then think about what the best version of your future constable self would do and see if there's a difference. Shall I share with you what the results are? Yeah, let, let me share it. I'll share that with you. So the example is, is you, uh, you have identified an area on a local estate that is well known for antisocial behaviour. A group of young people have been congregating outside the community centre and have been intimidating local residents to identify the main concerns. Hang on, you've, you have spoken with a number of the residents. Sorry, really small writing. You have spoken to a number of the residents to identify the main concerns and what actions they would like the police to take. It does not appear that the group of young people are committing any criminal offence. However, the residents want the young people to be moved on and prevent them from congregating in the area. So you've got a scenario there where there's antisocial behaviour in the area, there's a community centre, I'd like you to imagine that, and out at the front of the community centre, maybe in the car park or in some open space, it's an area where young people are congregating and causing a bit of a nuisance to all the residents. They're not actually committing any offences. So um, the first one, first option is before taking any action, gather more information about the young people uh, from any relevant parties, such as social workers or community groups, and seek their views on what should be done. The second option, the young people are not committing a criminal offence. Explain to local residents that you will record and monitor the situation uh, for now in case it worsens. Uh, third option, disperse the young people and prevent them from congregating outside the community centre, for example, through more regular patrols. The fourth option, speak to the young people directly about why they are congregating outside the community centre and explain that the residents would prefer if they did not congregate in the area. So those are the four options. Um, so we're going to compare them then, aren't we? We're going to compare them. So my client, uh, the first thing they did is they answered the question as they are today, acting naturally, just being themselves, answering the questions honestly. And then I'm going to describe to you how that changed when they answered it as the best version of their future constable self. And I'm also going to share with you my thoughts on this as well. And bear in mind, this is all very subjective, this. It's a really interesting test they're presenting you with because what I'm hoping they did is that they ran these potential solutions by serving police officers. I'm not sure if they actually did, because that's not normally the sort of thing they do, because serving police officers might just turn around and go, why are you asking them that? Um, and I know they've done a lot of that over the past year or two in respect of some of the things they've proposed for the online assessment centre. I have ethical spies throughout the police service. So I'm hoping that's what they've done, but there's a, a sneaking suspicion that they haven't. So actually my ideas as to what the perfect answer might be might not be the same as the College of Policing's. Because believe it or not, a lot of people at the College of Policing have never been police officers. A lot of them have never been in police stations. How do I know this? Well, I've worked with them and for them on four occasions during my career. I've met a lot of them, awfully nice people, never been in a police station. I know, ridiculous. So anyway, as the, as the, as the person as they are today, acting naturally, just being themselves, answering the questions honestly. 
So before taking any action, uh, gather more information about the young people from any relevant parties such as social workers or community groups and seek their views on what should be done. Um, as they are today, they said that was counterproductive. Let's have a look at what they said um, as the best version of their future constable self. They said slightly effective, slightly effective. Um, I'd go one step further than that and say it was um, effective. Um, and I'll tell you what would make it very effective in a moment. So why is there a difference? Well, they've said slightly effective. I'm saying effective. Uh, initially, though, they said counterproductive. And the reason why this is effective, in my view, is because before you before you make a decision about what action you're going to take as a police officer, you should be analysing information from numerous sources in order to make that decision. Now, you can't always do that. Some decisions have to really be split second, but this is not something that requires a split second decision. This is something that you should be thinking very carefully about because your actions could ruin the relationship between the police and young people and actually could make matters worse, could be counterproductive. And so for that reason, um, consultation with other parties would make it as to what's happening there, why is it happening, what do you think we should do to resolve this, community groups, social workers, uh, education, uh, youth groups, this would make it effective. What would make it very effective is consulting the young people as well, talking to them about what are the reasons why they congregate in this area. Now I flash back to a little bit of work I did once I retired uh, for a police force that was dealing with some complex issues, but part of the complex issues was dealing with something very, very similar to this. And I suggested to them that you actually go and speak to the young people because they've not done that yet. And what they found out was that the reason why the young people were hanging around this particular location that was causing a problem was because they felt safe there and they felt safe in a group. What they said was there's good lighting and there's good CCTV and it's a good open space for us to congregate in. And actually, when you split us up and disperse us, we've become targets of robberies from people from the town nearby, the older kids from the town nearby. So consultation with the young people is really, really important, in my view, um, to build up a relationship, because if you're going to try and do anything at all to resolve this matter, you need to involve everyone, everyone. It's part of the problem solving triangle. Um, and I go into that in more detail in my online course. It's part of the problem solving process, the SARA process, eight stage community engagement um, problem solving process that I introduce you to. Um, so that would make it very effective if they did that. Is that making sense? Interesting though, that they've gone from um, thinking it's counterproductive to do that. And then when they've thought about the behaviors they need to adopt to be a police officer, they've gone for slightly effective. Like I said, I'd go for effective. So let's take a look at the next option. Uh, the young people are not committing a criminal offence. Explain to local residents that you will record and monitor the situation for now in case it worsens. Um, initially, they put down slightly effective. Um, and then they, as an officer, they said it would be ineffective. I agree with them. I agree with them there. Um, ineffective. Why is it ineffective? Because you're not actually doing anything <laughs> you're not doing anything at all to resolve it you're just monitoring the situation um, and that would sound like a fob off to members of the public and it's not actually going to do anything to resolve their genuine concerns so uh, for that reason ineffective uh, but again interesting that what they initially put down completely different to what they'd do as the best version of their future constable self so the next option, disperse the young people and prevent them from congregating outside the community centre, for example, through more regular patrols. Initially, as the, as the person they are today, acting naturally, answering the question honestly, just being themselves, they said effective. Um, in the second uh, attempt as a, a police officer, they said slightly effective. Um, I'm going to go for, I, I think they're wrong there. Uh, if they'd gone for ineffective, I think I probably would have said, OK, I can kind of see where you're going. I'm actually going to, going to go as far as to say that that would be counterproductive. 
Why counterproductive? Well, they're not actually doing anything wrong. They're not committing any criminal offences. They're just being a bit of a nuisance. Um, if you use any dispersal powers, I'd question the legality of them. Um, and if you did disperse them, the, it's highly likely you could criminalise some of them if they return to the area. And it's not going to do anything at all to resolve the matter. Um, if anything, it's going to increase demand through all of these regular patrols that are needed to enforce the dispersals. Uh, so, yeah, for that reason, I'm going to go for counterproductive. Not actually solving the problem. You're dealing with the symptoms. You're not dealing with the causes. So um, their last option, speak to the young people directly about why they are congregating outside the community centre and explain that the residents would prefer if they did not congregate in the area. Um, as uh, they are today, they've said slightly effective and as their best version of their future constable self, they said counterproductive. And I'd be interested to know why they actually said counterproductive there. Um, but it's an odd one, this, because I think part of it I'd speak to the young people concerned about why they are hanging around there. Yeah, I'd like, I'd like that. Um, if they've worded it and share, share that residents are concerned about why they are congregating in the area and what, it, what it's causing, what problems it's causing to local residents, I would have said that that would be slightly effective or even effective. Um, I wouldn't say counterproductive, though. I wouldn't say counterproductive. Because uh, you're not actually moving them on. Um, and the way they've worded it, explain that the residents would prefer if they did not congregate in the area. Well, that sounds a little bit like you're telling them to move on. Um, and you're not. Uh, so so uh, the wording there is a bit ambiguous. And I think this is where people are going to really struggle. Because uh, I struggled with this one a little bit, thinking, is it counterproductive? Is it ineffective? Is it slightly effective? I'd go for slightly effective because you're actually doing some form of consultation and you're sharing that the the residents would, you know, they're feeling a bit upset about what you're doing and why you're hanging around here and they prefer it if you could go somewhere else. But the problem is, where's the somewhere else? So uh, I wrestled with this one. And this is someone who was a neighbourhood inspector for eight years. So this is why they're kind of tough. And my client actually did say, that this was the toughest one they did because he actually straight after this they went and did the situational judgment test um, and the behavioural styles questionnaire as part of the national SIF. They passed it by the way, they passed it. Why did they pass it? Because they put themselves in the shoes of their future constable self and the feedback they actually gave me was everything that they'd learnt on the online course anyway and what they'd learnt about handling the situational judgment tests has taught them uh, what sort of approach works in terms of policing style getting your head in the game for being a police officer because in the online assessment center you have to do the stage threes the two stage threes this is where you have to act as a police officer and think as a police officer even though the guidance says you don't need to have any knowledge of policing it certainly helps so what i try and get everyone to do is to get their head in the game so there you go folks um just one example there um so what am i doing to help you through this process and you've probably seen, as I sort of wrestled with one of the answers there, um, a process that I think is going to be quite subjective. And we're not going to find out what the correct answers are ever, because the actual test itself is going to be a sort of a under lock and key thing. So like I said, I would be interested in knowing who decides what the correct answer is. Um, and like I said, that's eight years of community policing experience there as a neighbourhood inspector, as a I was uh, on the International Advisory Board of a big European project that was looking to improve community policing across Europe for three years. I've spoken at conferences about community policing and policing community engagement and problem solving. So this is my thing. And even I struggled a little bit with thinking, hmm, is it? Oh. <laughs> so there you go, folks. A very subjective test, um, but they passed. My client passed. If they'd put down their original answers, to this example scenario, they would have failed the, this example scenario. They would have failed um, because they got it completely, completely wrong, um, and so especially in terms of the uh, gathering information and analysing that information, saying that was counterproductive. Um, so there you go, folks. Hopefully that's been helpful for you. 
Um, I will, by the time you click on the link below to take a look at the online resources, um, within the Online Assessment Centre course, I will have guidance for you and a new sample set of situational judgment tests to help you understand how to get your head in this new game. Am I training people to pass? Yeah, of course I am. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> so if you've got any comments or any questions, please do put them in the links below, whether you're watching this on YouTube or uh, if you're on a podcast, you can always email me, info at bluelightconsultancy.com. Or if you're watching this on Facebook, uh, links below, you, you can put to, uh, either contact me through the links below or you can uh, just message me via Facebook. Anyway, I hope you got something out of this podcast and video. I know it's slightly a long one, but I tried to explain the best way I possibly could how to get your head in the game for these new situational judgment tests and behavioural styles questionnaires. These could be the difference between you embarking on this awesome career and not. Uh, so my client, I think they probably would have failed it if they'd not put their head in the, the game that I've shown them. So well done to my client for passing. Uh, you're now through to the online assessment centre and I know they're doing a lot of hard work to make sure they pass that. So I'll catch up with you soon, folks. Bye bye for now.